growing up, my father had this thing called the 75% rule. And he said, son, if you can't do something better than 75% of the people doing it, then you need to do one of two things, figure out how to get better at it or go do something else. Cause obviously it doesn't matter to you. Hey, hey, welcome to the podcast where dreams meet determination and success is just around the corner. I'm your host, Suzanne Taylor King, and I'm here to help you unlock the full potential of your business and your life. Welcome to Unlock Your Way with STK. Let's unlock your path to success together. Good morning, good morning, everyone. Suzanne Taylor King here for another episode of Unlock Your Way with STK. And I am honored to have a conversation today with Oakland McCullough, 23 year Army veteran, now retired mm. and stepping into for the last how many years speaking and coaching? Yeah, a couple of years now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you stood out to me. I can't even remember how we originally got connected, but I heard you talk and I said, this, this is somebody I love military mindset. I love the athlete mindset. And you're really this unique combination of all of that. Uh, I'm going to brag on you a little bit. Not only your career, your military awards, but also teaching and mentoring other people. Uh, really honorable. Yeah. Well, thank you, Suzanne. I, I, you know, I look at it as my responsibility. You know, I tell leaders all the time. It is your responsibility to help develop, coach, teach, mentor that next generation of leaders because we are going to reap what we sow. I yeah. promise. And if we don't do a good job, we deserve what we get. Yeah. Well, I I think my dad was in the army uh, only for about four years, and but I think the takeaway was really that do unto others attitude. Also the the strictness mm -hmm. that I was raised with, you know, from make your bed to don't complain. And I don't know, there, there's something really foundational about those military ways. Could you speak a little bit to that? Yeah. So I, I think, you know, one of the benefits of being in the service, whether you do it for two years, 30 years, 40 years, and I just talked to somebody the other day, had 40 42 years in, in the service. Wow. It's just amazing to me. Almost double what I did. Um, it, you know, one of the benefits is you get some self-discipline. Um, and there is a difference between discipline and self-discipline. And, and, and you also just learn how to make things happen. You know, it, one, of the, one of my favorite talks I ever listened to, and I got to do it in person. It was an honor to listen to General Hal Moore. Um, and he, one of the things he said was life isn't like baseball. You, well, it's not three strikes and you're out. He said, if you try something and it doesn't work, try something else. And if that doesn't work, try something else. And he said, just keep trying until it works. Yeah. And I think that's one of the things that we learn in the military because you can't give up there, you know, that you, you got to keep trying. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think that's what attracted me to stoic philosophy so much was just that grit and resilience and, you know, fall seven, rise eight theory. And so many times we see people, especially in the online space, and most of my clients are in the online space. It It's so easy to look at someone else and think they're an overnight success yeah. Or, you know, it didn't take an, oh, it's easy for them, you know, and it, gosh, I just think it's not easy for anyone, but some people make it look easy. And that's one of the things you do. You make well, it you know, look easy. I, yeah. Well, I, I think, you know, I think it, a lot of it has to do with your attitude, you know, mm. and I think I'm a, I'm a believer that it, it's not about me. It's about the people I have the privilege to lead. And I try to always keep that in mind. And I try to treat people in the right way. 
And, you know, somebody told me the other day, they said, you know, you're always so calm. And I said, <laughs> on the outside, maybe. I said, but, but, but that all comes from, you know, if you want to be a leader, then you have to set the example. And if you're all panicky and you're, and you're all upset and yelling and screaming, then the people that you're leading feed off of that. Mm-hmm. And if you're calm, then they'll feed off of that. Yeah. Yeah, you do. You have like an energized tranquility about you. Listening to a couple uh, talks you gave on other podcasts, um, it it's very centered and grounded and comes from a place of wisdom. What's the secret to that? So I think one of the things that I emphasize a lot is that you never stop learning. You know, your pro- professional development, first of all, is on you. Um, you know, an organization that you're a part of should have a professional development program. I'm a huge advocate of that. But in the first place, it's all on you. You got to want to professionally develop. And and so I I, I think that is part of it. I, I just never stop learning. I, I read, I listen to people. You know, I don't care how long you've been doing, whatever it is you're doing, you can always get better. You can always learn something new. And I, that's the philosophy I've always had. And that was kind of ingrained in me and my fa- with my father. Growing up, my father had this thing called the 75% rule. And he said, son, if you can't do something better than 75% of the people doing it, then you need to do one of two things. Figure out how to get better at it or go do something else because obviously it doesn't matter to you. Wow. Wow. Did that apply to grades as well? It did. Uh, that was 75 was my cutoff of what I was allowed to yeah. bring home. Yeah. 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 It wasn't, I, it wasn't a pleasant day if I brought home something below a B. Yeah. Um, I, I remember going to college uh, to be a dental hygienist. Uh, that's where I started. And there was no D. You had to get an A, B, or C, or you got an F, and you had That's to right. do whatever you were doing over again in order to get an A, B, or C. And I remember walking in that first day, and they explained the grading system. And it didn't phase me at all because that was already the expectation that I grew up with. But I remember some of the other people thinking, oh, how am I going to do that? How am I like that really scared some of the students. And I'd love for you to speak a little bit about fear because you faced war and conflicts and, you know, all kinds of things in your career. And I'm sure you've faced things in your personal life. How does that fear really come up for you and how do you move past it? Yeah. So I, I, anybody who tells you they're not, they don't have a fear of something is lying to you. You know, I I think I've probably only known three people that I could truly say seem like they were fearless and all three of them are dead. Um, I don't know if that's a sign or not. <laughs> yeah, well, I think it is. I, you know, I think fear is a good thing. It, it It's something that keeps us from doing dumb things or from doing things that, that we pr- probably shouldn't do. Um, so I, I, th- I don't think fear is a bad thing that the thing you had to, you, you have to get to yourself in yourself is to overcome so, some fears. Um, and, and I think part of that comes from a purpose. If you know what you're really doing and it's worth doing, then you, you can deal with that fear a little bit better. Um, and I think, that that has, I I think you can use fear as a, a tool to encourage yourself to keep pushing yourself to overcome that. I I read somewhere one time and I can't remember who said it, but they said the fears you don't face today become your limits tomorrow. Mm. So if you don't face the fears that you have, then they're going to limit you and whatever it is that you want to do. I love I love that because I I think that's I've used as an indicator that I'm on the right track uh, out of my comfort zone, right? Yeah. If it doesn't scare me a little, and uh, positive psychology kind of teaches to reframe it as excitement. That's right. Yeah. 
I, I'm the I'm the same way with stress. I I, I think mm-hmm. stress is a good thing. Um, you know, it shows you you're doing something worth doing. Yeah. If you, if you don't have any stress in your life, I question whether or not you're doing very much. Yeah. Yeah. I that's that it goes to that challenge factor. I, I love to challenge other people, just like I love to challenge myself. Like how how much can I learn about that? How much better can I do? And obviously, uh, you've had that same attitude for a long time. What's the secret to learning more faster? I, I ask a lot of people this question. How do they learn? How do you absorb information? So I, everybody's a little different. You know, that's one of the thing, first things they teach you when you go to a teaching class where they're going to teach you how to be an instructor, especially in the military. They say, you know, everybody learns differently. Some people want to read. Some people want a, 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 a lecture. Some people want video, you know, or li- listen, you know, like podcasts, mm-hmm. whatever. I prefer to sit in person and listen to somebody if I can. Um, that's th- just the way I always learned, but yeah. I'm, I'm starting to get to the point where I'm using podcasts as well. And not even, doesn't even have to be a video podcast is something I can put in my ears. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm starting to pick up on that a little bit more, you know, talk about out of your comfort zone. That was a little bit for me. Uh, yeah. but, but it, 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 it is an easy way to do it and a quick way to do it. And it's a, something you can do driving you can do it you know i fish a lot i love to fish i can do it out fishing whatever i want to do i can listen to a podcast and i and i can pick up things that way but my my preferred method is in person listening and you know i take lots of notes i'm a note taker i was the closing speaker for the georgia association of chiefs of police in columbus georgia and i sat through i don't know three or four breakout session you know waiting for my turn the the last day Mm -hmm. to close the conference. And I'm sitting there taking notes and somebody said, aren't you one of the speakers? I said, yeah, it doesn't mean I can't learn from you. Yeah. 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 I love that. Um, I, I often, I think podcasts are great because you can, even if it's a topic you already think you know about, you can listen a little faster, like on one and a half speed. And pick up nuggets. I can't tell you how many times I've been out walking, listening to a topic, and picked up something and had to jot it down in my phone. Yeah. Really, really helpful. But I'm a visual learner. Okay. Um, so seeing someone demonstrate or do something or even give a talk in person, something about watching the other person really drives me. Yeah, me too. I mean, I, I'm that way too. And, and you know, I, I grew up working on farms and it, it was always, you know, a far- and I wasn't a farmer. My family wasn't a farmer, but I grew up working on farms as a kid. And so it was all new to me. And I, every time a farmer would do something, i say, so show me how to do that. And, and, and it was, you know, he'd show me and I'd do it. And then I, then I knew it. I, I'm that way too. I want. I, I love the in person mm-hmm. uh, interaction. To me, you know, and it goes back to communication. You know, face to face communication, which is a lost art today, unfortunately, with a lot of the young people. Um, it, it's so important because you can pick up on body language. You can pick up on. I can when I when I tell somebody to do something. When I was a leader. I loved look in their eyes. I could tell whether or not they understood what I was asking them to do. Yeah. You don't get that over text or email or phone calls. I mean, I, I, to me, it's just so the face to face communication is just so important. Yeah, I, I agree. I think facial cues, uh, I'm notorious for, I can't hide how I feel. Yeah. My wife tells me I can't either. <laughs> and I, I think one of the cool parts about uh, being with someone in person is the full body language. How do they stand? How do they carry themselves? And how do they interact with other people? Um, I know my dad used to talk about that a lot within 
the military. You know, how do you interact with others is usually a good key to not only your leadership. Um, do you agree with that? I do. Absolutely. I think, you know, I, 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 and, and I, and I learned this as a lieutenant. I was, uh, I was a general's aide. Um, and during the first Gulf War, I was a one star general's aide. And General Powell, who is still the most impressive man I've ever met in person, yeah. um, he was coming to address all the generals. So we had a big circus tent and it was a circus tent, just a huge tent out in the middle of nowhere in the desert. And all of these generals are out there and all of us aides, you know, up here I was a lieutenant and there were some captains and some majors and mm -hmm. we, we, we went there with our generals to get them there. And we were all standing in the back. We didn't have a seat. We were all standing in the back of the tent and all these generals, one, two, three star generals are all talking, all really noisy. General Powell walks in. It goes deathly silent. Wow. That's a good Everybody job. knew who was in charge. And, yeah. and it wasn't them. Mm -hmm. and, but the, the most impressive thing to me was this. At the end, all of us aides ran out and got our the vehicles ready for the generals as they came out of the tent. General Powell walks out. He was the first general to walk out. And he didn't, his vehicle was right there. He didn't walk to his vehicle and get in and leave. He walked over to a, a vehicle right next to him that had a corporal and a sergeant standing there. And he talked to them for about 15 minutes. Wow. Now, if I remember that, and that was 33 years ago, you can imagine that specialist and that sergeant will never forget that the rest of their lives. Didn't have to do that. Right. That's that's the show of a, a good leader is that they can talk to anybody and want to talk to everybody. Um, mm -hmm. And and so that that just impressed me. And I and I tried to keep that all through my career. I don't care who you are. I'm I want to talk to you and learn from you and. Get your opinion on stuff. As people who buy my book, I always tell them, and they tell me they, you know, they'll send me a message down LinkedIn or whatever and say, I bought your book. I say, I want your feedback. Send me feedback after you read it. Mm -hmm. I love that. I I I think I always say that focus is the really hot leadership skill right now. How how can you you know, be more present, more attentive, you know, not have your phone in your hands all the time. But I, I would argue that it's a really close second with how you talk to people. Are you able to have conversations? Are you able to connect with people from a general all the way down to somebody who's homeless? That's you right. Know? And how you treat people, I, I think, needs to be a universal thing. I agree. I agree. You know, one of the one of the things, and I, I spent two years running the day-to-day -day operations of a food bank after I retired yeah. from the Army. And I, one of the things that I was adamant about, we were not doing a good job of serving the homeless community uh, in the areas around where our food bank was. And so I started a program where once a month we went out where they were, you know, in, in a community where there were homeless and they could come very easily and gather where we were going to hand out the food. And I would spend, yeah, I didn't have to be there, uh, but I did. I always made an effort to go there and to talk to them and, and just listen to them, um, which yeah. is, Another loss communication skill, listening, okay. actually, actually listening to people. Uh, but I think it's so important that, that you have that ability to talk to whoever and to listen very well. Yeah. Yeah. Truly a lost, a lost art. It is. Listen. And we got, and you know, and that's one of the things I really emphasize in my talk is the communication skills. Um, in all forms, but certainly listening and being able to talk to people. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's, let's talk a little bit about your book and not only who it's for, but where, where all of that came from about leadership legacy. Yeah. Where did all of that information come from? So, you know, I, 
and I, and I named it that for a reason, because I believe that it, it is leaders do need to leave a legacy. And I think legacy is a two part thing. It's very small what you actually did in your organization. It, it does matter because results do matter in the r- real world. But it, here's the problem. If you tie your legacy to what you did in your organization, then when the new boss comes in, the new leader takes over when you leave and they change everything, then there goes your legacy. So it's not very long. In my opinion, the majority of your legacy is that next generation of leaders that you are helping to create who are going to be around for the next 10, 15, 20 years. And then if you do it correctly, then they understand that it's their responsibility to create the next generation. So you got that generation you influenced plus the ones they're going to do and the ones they're going to do. So your legacy could last the next 200 years Mm -hmm. if you do it right. Um, So I, when I, I've been given this leadership presentation for, I don't know, 30 years, Mm -hmm. um, obviously updated it changes it a little bit every once in a while but i've given it for a long time and i always knew i wanted to write that this book and it's funny cuz i was always thinking well, i'm going to write the book and then my wife and i and her mother and two other people that live in our condo we went to a motivational speaking slash how do we revitalize the catholic church event at, at, a, at our church and it was a three hour long event. This guy was, t- and he didn't talk for all three hours, obviously, but he's a great speaker. And he spoke for 45 minutes. We take a 15 minute break and did, did it like that. And every time he took a break, I went up and talked to him because he's doing what I wanted to do, get out and speak. Mm-hmm. And at the very end, I, we said our goodbyes and he started to walk away and he turned around and he looked at me and he said, Oak, have you written a book? And I said, well, I'm thinking about it. He said, stop thinking about it and write it. Wow. So I went home that night. I wrote out the table of contents and I started the next day. That was the 16th of February. And I published at 16th of February, 2020. And I published it on the 12th of February, 2021. So just under a year to write the book. And I thought I was writing it for young men and women. That's what I, That was my initial audience that I thought mm-hmm. would really benefit from it. And I think they have. And if you read the reviews of the book, I think I I hit that mark. But then I had a two-star Marine Corps general who I connected with on LinkedIn and had a couple of conversations and he decided to find my book and read it. And he sent me a message one day and he said, Oak, you know, I didn't learn a whole lot of new things. I learned a few new techniques. He said, but what I really took out of your book was this. He said, I'd be reading along and I'd read about something that you talk about. And I'd say to myself, you know, I used to do that really well, and I don't do that so well anymore. Maybe I should dedicate some time to get back to doing that. And I think that's so important because, again, no matter how long you've been doing this, we all need a nudge every once in a while to kind of bring us back to reality that maybe we, we, we forgot something that helped make us successful. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's really the secret to success. You know, all the books, all the classics, you know, talk about high performance habits or the habits of the most successful. Uh, and I I really think it's about remembering what you already know. Yeah. And that's repetition. That's, you know, putting systems in place that if if I'm doing this, then this happens. And right. and just revisiting it every single day or at least once a week to yeah you know, kind of form that direction of where you're going. Well, you know, I'm a huge believer in reflection um, mm-hmm. because I, I I don't believe you learn from experience, from things that happen. You learn from the reflection of things that happen. Oh, it's, yeah. That is how you learn. Yeah. So I, re- I, I do two types of reflection after each major event. So like when I do a talk, I'll think about how I did it and could I do it better. Or, you know, when I was in the Army, when we did a training event, we bring everybody together. Okay, this is what we we're supposed to do. This is what we did. How do we get better at it? And I don't care, even if you're successful at something, you can still get better at it. Um, but then I also have started 
a uh, few years ago, I started a daily reflection. So every night before I go to bed, because I I'm like you, I'm a, I believe in routines inside of routines. You know, I start my day every day the same way. I get up, I get my cup of coffee, I listen to the daily mass, I read a couple chapters in the Bible, and I do my daily prayers. And then I I do my journal because I keep a a daily journal, and then I reflect on what I did that day. What did I do? How could I do it better so that tomorrow I, I'm a little bit better than I was today? Yeah. Yeah, that 1% better uh, really makes a big needle mover in the long run. Uh, I love it. I, I love the idea of every every day looks very similar. You know, and that's not boring to me. I'm sure it's not to you. It's there. There's something, and I forget who said it, but there's something magical when your habits and your routines are actually the life that you want to live. You know, that it actually becomes who you are rather than um, something you're striving to. And it looks like we lost Oakland there for a second. Let's see if he comes back. You know, when we're talking about morning routines, habits of high performers, you know, it doesn't have to be first thing in the morning, that routine. It can easily be, you know, something you do later in the day. It has to work for you. That's I'm a firm believer in that routine has to work for you. And whether it's a combination of mm -hmm. exercise, reflection, meditation, journaling, uh, or some sort of reading, personal development, learning, um, all of those things go into my, you know, power hours that I spend. All right, you're back. Yep. He, he's back. Um, I talked a little bit while you were gone just to fill our space since we're live uh, about that morning routine. And, you know, whatever it looks like for you, it doesn't have to be first thing in the morning, but it's that combination of personal growth, a little bit of exercise, a little bit of movement. Um, mine always includes a cup of coffee. Uh, and, you know, that reflection piece is so key, so key. Um, whether you're reflecting on learning or a mistake, it's, it's truly how to take your mistakes and turn them into lessons and yes. things that you do different. In the that's, the, that's the only way you're going to learn from a mistake is to reflect on it. You know, yeah. again, what, what did I want to do? What happened and how do I make up that difference? Yeah. Um, because that th th if you don't reflect on it, then it was just, you don't learn from it. You, you don't figure out how to get better at it. Right. So, and I think, do you think the same goes for negative experiences sure. or? Um, I think, it, I, you know, I had, I had a friend who was a head football coach and now he's the president of the university, but he used to say, you, you need to treat success the same way you treat failure. Hmm. If you don't do something well, then you should reflect on it and figure out how to get better. And if you do something well, figure out how to get better at it, um, yeah. because you you can always do something better than you did it, even if the, even if you think it was successful. I love that. I love it. Well, thank you so much for all these insights. I absolutely love your book. Uh, huge fan of yours. How can my listeners get in touch with you and learn more? About oak, yeah. So, so I have a website, um, LTC Oak McCullough uh, at our dot com, and and I'm also so you can go on there, and on there it has my email address, my cell phone number, all the social media, and you know we connected on LinkedIn. That's how I do most of my social media is on LinkedIn. And if you want to send me a message, ha always happy to talk to people. Uh, I always try to make time for somebody who wants to connect with me on a Zoom meeting or over a phone call. And I would love to talk to you if you're, if, if you're interested. I love it. Thank you so much for uh, letting me be a fan. I appreciate you. And thank you for joining me on Unlock Your Way. And it was a pleasure to hear a little bit about your way today. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for having me on the show, Suzanne. I've been looking forward to it. 
You're welcome. Thank you for tuning in to another empowering episode of Unlock Your Way. I hope you found today's discussion inspiring and you're ready to take your business and personal growth to that next level. If you're feeling as fired up as I am and eager to unlock that full potential, I'm here to help you on your journey and provide that personalized guidance tailored to your unique goals and challenges. Simply book a one-on-one coaching call with me and we'll dive deep into your business aspirations and see how we could co-create a roadmap for your success. And whether you're striving to scale an enterprise or just getting started, I'm here to support you every step of the way. To schedule your coaching call, simply visit the website at unlockyourwaywithstk.com, click on the book a call button, and we'll turn your dreams into that reality. Subscribe and review on your favorite podcast platform and on YouTube. Plus, you can join over 800 entrepreneurs in the Idea Lab Facebook group. Let's make success as an entrepreneur happen together. Until next time, I'm SDK. Keep dreaming big, stay focused, and most of all, have fun while you're doing it.